Well, good morning. Today we celebrate the two sacraments that our Lord has uh, declared that we follow. One is in believer's baptism, and the other is the Lord's Supper. And so we do remember what he accomplished for us on the finished work of the cross and the empty tomb today. Um, this is Gracie Mae Tony, and Gracie received Christ after school in her mom and dad's car. This is awesome. God meets us anywhere. And she's made her public profession of faith in the Lord Jesus. And today she is following him in believer's baptism. Gracie May, do you profess the Lord Jesus to be your everlasting personal Lord, Master, and Savior? Yes, sir. And because you do, I baptize you, my sweet little sister, in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in the beautiful likeness of his death, raised in the glorious likeness of his resurrection. <laughs> Gracie May, may you be salt and light for your Savior every day, being on mission for Him, sharing your story. God bless you, sister. This is Cherie Woods. Cherie received Christ some time ago, and she's getting her baptism in order, professing Christ as her Savior. Cherie, do you profess the Lord Jesus Christ to be your personal Lord, Master, and Savior? I do. And because you do, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in the beautiful likeness of his death and raised in the glorious likeness of his resurrection. Amen. And Cherie, you as well, be salt and light for your Savior, sharing your story as you go, being a Great Commission Christian. And all God's people said a glorious amen. Father, we rejoice in the gospel and for those who are obedient to bring the gospel our way. Thank you for these who have surrendered to you, O Lord. And I just ask, Lord God, that you and you alone will be honored and glorified and exalted in all that we do here this precious Lord's day. May others come to know you today. May the body of Christ be edified. Lord, may you stir our hearts and draw us ever more so closer to you, making us more in the likeness of your glorious image. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen, amen. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? 
are so grateful to have you here um, this Lord's Day. And if by chance you were with us last Sunday, welcome back. We're so thankful to have you here um, this Lord's Day. And pray God's richest blessings upon you as we exalt the one and only uh, Lord Jesus, certainly our soon coming King. We pray that uh, he will do a work in all of our hearts today and that we'll leave here a very, very changed people. I want to thank those who were on mission yesterday. We had a variety of things. Our truck stop ministry, many touches was made at the truck stop ministry yesterday. Brother Charles's class, we're thankful for those who served in that capacity. Um, and then we had a group of our men uh, who was helping one of our, our, our folks, uh, Steve Jones. Y'all have heard us, we've been praying for him for so long, the heart transplant guy. And they, um, they served by working on his roof. And thank you for giving your time yesterday as well. Um, Stacy and Melanie were working at a motel ministry yesterday as well. So the Lord was all over the place in a variety of ways, fulfilling the Great Commission yesterday. And next Saturday at 9.30, let me remind you to please be here. We'll be our post-Easter um, outreach. This is an opportunity for us to reach those who were with us for the Good Friday event, Easter Sunday morning event. We had many guests. And uh, we want to make some touches in that regard. So we need many, many people uh, to be here. It's very easy, I promise. This is, this is an easy mission trip in our Jerusalem right here in our back door. So 930 Fellowship Hall will dose you up with some donuts, get you all sugared, and uh, then we'll go share the good news, all right? You can talk as fast as I can when you get all those donuts going. Right? Anyway, so uh, come. It's a great time. You've never been before? This is a good way to get your feet wet in missions. Um, next Saturday, so we're grateful for that. Our prayer calendar today calls for the Baptist Collegiate Ministries of West Georgia, another massive mission field. I want to pray for the Baptist Collegiate Ministries there. Next Sunday, Bob Pittman will be with us. Bob has been with us many times, an extraordinary, phenomenal preacher, extraordinary pulpiteer, the list goes on. But the Bob is in his 80s and, and cooking with gas. I like to bring these guys in as long as they're journeying in earth so that you get under some solid, grounded, incredible preaching from these patriarchs, I'll call them, in the kingdom. You do not want to miss um, Bob next Sunday morning, and please bring an unchurched lost guest with you. And even those who maybe know Jesus, kind of gotten out of church, it's a great opportunity to invite them to be here, and you're one. Invite your one next Sunday as well. You should have received a letter from me as well uh, via email. And then we also have these at the Welcome Centers downstairs, upstairs. Together, the vision continues. I shared with you weeks ago um, about uh, our next step. Where do we go from here? The Lord gloriously has paid this, this facility off. We're debt-free to God's glory. I share with you about three projects that the Lord has laid upon our hearts. Um, to, to proceed with, the first being uh, the renovation of the red brick building, the renovation of our student ministry, middle school, high school, where they meet. We have phenomenal facilities for our preschoolers, phenomenal facilities for our children, and now we're gonna focus our attention on state-of-the-art uh, facilities for our middle schoolers and high schoolers. And uh, based upon our giving history, um, I fully believe that God, through the obedience of his people, um, can acquire around 200,000 this giving day uh, for Sunday in May. This will be a substantial start on these projects so that um, our goal is, is to pay for them as we go and as best as we possibly can remain debt free. And so through the obedience of his people, you ask God to see what he would have you to do in being a part of um, reaching our middle schoolers and high schoolers um, with a much, much, much needed facility at The Rock. All that is detailed for you in this letter. If you did not receive one, again, there's a hard copy at the lower upper level welcome desk. Right when you walk out, they're there. Grab you one, read it, see what the Lord is doing. And then we look forward to what God is gonna do here. This is so fun for me. It's just so fun to see how God is gonna continue to use his people um, for the furtherance of his kingdom. And listen, our goal here, folks, is this. If you've got any questions, please feel free to ask myself or Brother Brian. But the goal here is, is to, as best as we can to remain debt-free and to stay ahead of each one of these projects and being good stewards, good stewards of what he has so blessed us with. And thank you for being so faithful um, in, your, in your giving to God's glory. Amen. So we celebrate, continue to, the, together the vision continues as we fulfill the Great Commission. Your word, word for today, we'd like to give you a verse as you walk in the building, Ephesians 6, 11. 
put on the whole armor, God. And I get dressed in that before I get out of bed because I know it's going to be a war out there um, that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the schemes of the devil. And um, if you haven't got suited up, if you haven't got armored up yet, um, as we pray, you do that. Helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, belt of truth, feet shod, carrying the gospel, feet, sword, sword of spirit, shield of faith, armor up so that all the fiery darts of the enemy will ricochet from our mere presence. Amen? Without further ado, let's still ourselves before the Lord. If you haven't got your elements for the Lord's Supper, um, during our time of fellowship, there are baskets with the elements to my right and to my left, please do so. If you've joined us live stream, um, while we're welcoming, um, if you'll obtain your elements as you can in your home, so that you can participate as you have joined us live stream as well. Lord Jesus, we're so thankful for your overwhelming grace, your love, your mercy, your, your watch care. Lord, I, I just cannot help but reflect on how you've taken care of me this past week. You, I don't even know the things you have safeguarded me from. Some I do, but I'm sure there's many I don't. And I'm so thankful, God, as your son, that you take care of me. I praise you, Lord. But most of all, you took care of me on the cross. God, I thank you for, in that while I was yet still a sinner, you died for me. I thank you for your unconditional love. Oh, God. I praise you, Lord, for your overwhelming grace and goodness showed on to me second by second. Lord, I thank you for this precious church family that you've allowed me to be a part of, God. And Lord, I pray that you will hedge us and keep us unified and missions-minded and Christ-exalting and biblical and prayerful in all that we do. Keep us fixed and focused on you, the author and the finisher of our faith. And Lord, I pray as we worship you today in song and time of communion and prayer and at the Lord's table, uh, Lord, in your word, that God, your Holy Spirit will rule and reign. And God, may you do that which you can do. Wash us in your word, I pray, oh God. And when the invitation is given, God, may we respond. Just respond out of obedience, no matter what, Lord, out of, out of obedience. You've prompted many in this room to make decisions, Lord, may we follow suit. And Lord, we, it's with great excitement and anticipation. We, we, Lord, just once again avail ourselves for your use for these campus facilities to be what you want them to be so that, only so that the Great Commission is fulfilled. May we be obedient in our stewardship. We love you, Lord. Thank you for loving us. And it again is with great excitement that we await what you have in store for us this entire Lord's Day. In the name of Jesus, the soon coming King, the great I am, I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, if this is your first or second time with us today, yes, we're so honored that you're here. You're special to us. We want to greet you and get to know you a little better. And so if this is your first or second time with us, we're going to ask in just a moment you'll remain seated. Our ushers have a packet of information for you. It tells you a little bit about the church, and inside there's a guest card. Please take it out, fill it out, drop it in the offering plate today so that we can pray for you and uh, know that you're here as our guest today, all right? So members, uh, visitors, so we can find you, please remain seated. Members, please stand. Turn around and greet all of those around you. Have a time of fellowship together. Find those guests around you. Shake their hand and tell them that you're glad to see them today.
If you're thankful for the blood this morning, let's give the Lord a big hand clap of praise. Aren't you thankful? Let's pray together, church, and let's ask the Lord to bless this offering. God, we love you. We thank you and we praise you, God, for being right here in our midst. We thank you for the wonderful blood that you shed for our sins, that if we just ask that you'll forgive us and cleanse us and change us forever and forever. Oh, Lord, how I pray today that we be grateful for your blood shed, that we be grateful that you've set up eternity for us, Lord, to live with you forever if we trust you. God, I pray for those that are right here today that do not know you. It's never prayed and asked, them, asked you to come into their heart. Never made a decision for you, Lord. How I pray that today that you'll convict them, that you'll draw them. They need a fresh start. They need a brand new beginning. They need it through your blood shed for them. And God, I pray that today you'll work in our pastor's heart. Give him the words you'd have him to say. Lord, touch his voice today. May you have supernatural strength and energy, Lord, just to be able to proclaim your gospel. I pray that you'll do a mighty work through him and through your preaching. Lord, we thank you for those that were here last week, for the seeds that were sown. And I pray, Lord, that you will just manifest yourself in their lives, Lord, to show them the reality of what they heard last week. God, I pray for this offering we're about to receive. I ask you, Lord, to touch and anoint it. How thankful we are for the manifold blessings you've given our church. How thankful we are that you blessed us all in such a great way. May we continue to be about your business and about your service. Looking forward to the days ahead and the opportunities we have. And just as our pastor shared, to be able to invest in our middle schoolers and high schoolers in a great way. To show them that, that God's way is the right way. To provide them a great location to bring their friends and to, to preach the gospel and to do a mighty work right here on this campus each and every week. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. You know, we often use the phrase, ain't God good? Don't we use that phrase a lot? Isn't God good? Boy, he's good to us. But do we really think about how good God really is? Do we really pause and do we just talk about how good he is when things are going our way? Or are we willing to still say that God is good no matter what we're facing, no matter what we're up against? Listen to these words. It says, I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails. And all my days I've been held in your hands. The good days and the bad days. Held in his hand. Isn't that right, Lynn? God has you no matter what you're up against, doesn't he? From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Are you that committed today, church? Are you that committed to sing of his goodness no matter what you're up against, no matter what you face today? Maybe you face death. Maybe you face the trials of cancer. Maybe you face the trials of a, a work situation or whatever's going on in your life. I don't have a clue what you may be facing, but are you willing to still say that God is still good? Because I'm going to tell you, my friend, he is still faithful. He is still good no matter what you see or what you may be up against. And here's the proof of it. Because all my life, you have been faithful. And all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath I breathe that I am able, oh, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. Listen to these words.
the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire into darkest nights. You are close like no has chased us day after day whether you like it or whether you believe it or not his goodness is real amen and he's gonna look how how far are you gonna make God just continue to run and dump his goodness on you are you just gonna relent and realize that God is better than I deserve and God has given me everything I need God has always been faithful he's always been there and too many times we're running his legs off trying to catch us and hem us back up. But today we need to surrender all that we have. We need to surrender our life to the Lord and realize that his goodness is worthy of it all. Aren't you thankful? Sing that line for me, Madeline. Because all my life you have been faithful. And all so, so
much for leading us once again in tremendous worship this morning. And again, I pray we never uh, get over the goodness of God. Amen. Uh, day by day, morning by morning, new incredible mercies in which um, I see, we all see, um, because of his overwhelming, undeserved goodness. Amen. Thank you all so much for speaking to us in song today. John 19, 19, and um, guys, I will probably read verse 20 and 21 too. Just if you get it up there, fine. If no, no problem. John 19, 19, 20 and 21. Um, we're kind of in between things. I just finished up a um, Easter series, three weeks, and um, today we, um, in perfect timing, come to the Lord's table um, post-Easter. By the way, and we say this all the time, every Sunday is Easter Sunday. Um, by the way, but, but hey, we corporately separate, celebrated it last week, and now we come to the table, um, which we're most grateful for, to remember um, what the Lord accomplished for us. And I want to talk about today, the Lord's table proclaims, the Lord's table proclaims, John 19, we're going to start in verse 19. Let's stand in honor and reverence of the reading of God's holy, inspired, infallible, truthful word. John 19, 19, and Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, this, by the way, is the first gospel track. That's what I referenced it as. This is the first gospel track. <clears throat> Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Now, look at verse 21. I'm sorry, verse 20. This title then read by many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh or near to the city. Many saw this, is what it say. And it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. So the language of the day. Um, and then verse 21, then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, write not, and these religious leaders were saying, look, do not write the king of the Jews. But here's what we want you to write, but that he said, I am king of the Jews. And then Pilate responded back in verse 22, what I've written, I've written. I ain't changing nothing. I'm done with you guys. That's basically what he was saying. And this is the written word of God. Father, we rejoice in your word. And Lord, again, I cannot um, stand behind this sacred desk and deliver anything. It's only encompassed upon your Holy Spirit. So I'm asking, Lord, as only you can do, may the words of my mouth, meditations of my heart be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. May you take full control of my body, my being, my existence. I just want to be used by you, Lord, laying myself in the altar of living sacrifice, praying that, God, you will deliver your word and your way and that you'll supernaturally captivate the hearts, the minds, the attention spans of everyone in the hearing of my voice. Draw us all, I pray, to a point of decision. May you be glorified in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Today, we live in a world where almost every awaking a moment um, that we are inundated with advertisements. Advertisements. The advertising industry is a mammoth operation in which billions of dollars are spent every year, in which fortunes are made and with every possible vehicle of communication employed, advertisements are just shooting our way all over the place. It's like overwhelming, just like this picture. There's like every commercial industry known to mankind is flooding us with advertisements from printed newspaper to electronic newspapers to magazines, news banners, news feeds, YouTube ads, social media banners, feeds, billboards, sports field banners, movie theater ads, postcard flyers, mailbox advertisements. The work of the advertisers invades all of our lives minute by minute. And the purpose of advertisement, of course, is to do what? Attract attention. It is quite literally to turn us towards what the promoter wishes to communicate. And that's why in our day and age, these advertisements are short, snappy, quick, sound bites, picture ads, whatever else to get your attention. I got an interesting advertisement in the mail. This was a mail out thing the other day and I thought, no, this is a first. 
I've got a bunch that hits the mailbox, but this one takes the cake. It says it's from the Mood, M-O-O-D industry, or at, this is who's advertising this. And I thought, and it's got this, these pictures of marijuana. And there's like blocks, whatever you call this, blocks of marijuana. And it says 100% legal, T-H-E, no medical card, card required. Now, I'm not a pothead, never have been, but I thought if I was, my Lord, this would be music to my ears. And uh, Paul N. was used as a participant of this uh, stuff. And he says, I like the quality. Gave me the mood I was wanting. I thought, no joke, I bet it did. <laughs> so if you partake of this advertisement, I can get 20% off. I get free five count of gummies. There's a, there's a code I need to put in my order. And there's two, four, there's six different kinds. I can get spark it up. I can get potential edibles. I can get disposable vapes. I can get pre-rolls. I can get concentrates, that's kind of like a candle, I guess you just smell it. And then there's, uh, um, it looks like some kind of dessert, like looks like Rice Krispie Treats is what it looks like. <laughs> it does, I promise, I'll show you this, catch me up. I told Lisa, I said, this is unbelievable. I mean, I mean, no, no joke, this is that day and age in which we live. So again, the advertisers want to turn us towards that which they're marketing. Um, they want us to go out and buy some particular product. Uh, but it may also be to advance an idea or to impart information. There's informational advertisements. Um, sometimes, however, the aim, like that of some advertisements we see today, is a warning. This is a good one, too. I came across this one. This was put on a, a um, blow dryer. You know, you, you ladies or guys do, too, blow dryer there. So it says, unplug it. Do not remove this tag, warning children of the risk of death by electrical shock. I'm like, no joke. So if I'm standing in the shower blow drying my hair, this ain't gonna be a good thing. <laughs> this advertisement is a warning, is to help us not be electrocuted. So you see, there's different types of advertisements that come our way. Um, it's to promote awareness. And my Lord, have y'all, well, I wanna do this one day. I'm not, I don't have time for this, but if I ever do have time, to count the number of drug ads that's on the TV. Oh my God, every 10 seconds there's a new drug. And I can't pronounce a word there. So who, who makes up the names of drugs? Somebody Google that for me. I just wanna, who, who names the drugs? I mean, can't you just name it a little more, a little more simpler? than what? The, but drug and, and attorneys, oh my Lord, there's attorney advertisements all over the place. Enough, let's get to the main idea before I get on a soapbox. Okay, so the main idea. The placard of the cross launched the initial witness that is to be being proclaimed in our daily journey until he comes. The narrative that we just read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews, he is the King. Our message, our gospel witness is to be being proclaimed in our daily journey until he comes. So with that main idea, I wanna see the work the, of, the, of the sign, the billboard, the placard, if you will, that hung over our Lord as he died on the cross for us. And first of all, we see the power of the placard. The power of the placard. The superscription above the cross of Jesus was also an advertisement, albeit, uh, a, a very crude and rudimentary affair that was taking place, crucifixion. A placard in those days was written with just a few words, uh, written on a piece of wood, no flashy advertisement as we see today. And the purpose of the advertisement above the, the one being crucified was to issue a warning. So this was a, an advertisement of warning. It was the established practice, as we talked about in the past three weeks, of the Romans to make the condemned man carry the, the transverse beam of his cross. That's the top part where he would be stretched from arm to arm. It would just be that transverse beam to the, to the cross, to the place of execution. And then a notice of the crime which he had committed was placarded around for all people to see. They hung this around their necks. So sometimes it was tied around the neck of the criminal himself, just like you see in this picture, 
Now, sometimes what most people would say, it wasn't the full cross. Jesus carried the full cross, but sometimes it was just the T-beam that they were carrying. And they would have this placard, as you see here in this scene, around their, their neck. And it was to say what he done. Sometimes it was carried on a board, again, by a soldier. Sometimes a soldier would be leading the execution squad, and he'd be holding this placard depicting what the criminal had done. And then finally, at the place of the crucifixion, it was nailed on the cross. And the purpose of the exercise in this, in this crucifixion act was to attract attention. By taking the longest route, there were no shortcuts to Calvary, friend. By taking the longest route at the place of punishment so that as many as possible as they were making their way to to the crucifixion site, they wanted as many people to see what was written. It was a way of saying, this is the crime this man has committed. But also, this is what's going to happen to you if you follow suit and do the same thing. It was to be a deterrent to crime. We're going to make an example out of him. We'll make an example out of you if you do the same thing. So the superscription or the tatelis on the cross on this occasion, we're told, was made um, in accordance with Pilate's own instructions. And finally, as we all know, it was placed above Jesus' head. And it read, as the verse says, this is Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. And it was written in three languages, Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. The idea of Jesus being advertised as a king was the last thing these Jewish religious leaders wanted. It ticked them off. As we see in the narrative, they go to Pilate and go, look, we want you to say, he said. It's been suggested that the Roman procurator had a double motive for writing it the way he did. It may be that Pilate intended not only to issue the customary warning to retaliate against those who had put him in the position of compromising his sense of justice. Again and again, in the trial of Jesus, Pilate very plainly said, I find no fault in this man. But when Pilate had taunted the crowd, asking them if they wanted to see their king crucified, and the crowd in turn appealed to Caesar, whom they hated, they despised Caesar, saying, we have no king but Caesar, who's this guy crucified? So Pilate, as Caesar's representative, had found himself trapped. He was in a very political corner and yielding to the pressure of public demand, we know he had Christ crucified. So partly, yes, to advertise the crime. Rome could not and would not tolerate insurrection. But also, I believe, with motives of taunting the temple leaders whose sheer perversity in the matter of Pilate, he he utterly despised these people. He made out the notice And when they begged him to alter it, uh, we have these immortal words which he spoke. What I have written, I've written. Let me ask you this question. As guilty sinners, I brought this up in the Easter series, we all wear a type of a placard around our necks. Uh, We're declaring just who we are. You know, the the placard that, 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 that I wear is a, a sinner. I mean, I could, I could wear this every day of my life. I'm a sinner. I was having this conversation with one of my grandchildren uh, this weekend. And I asked one of them, and I had a little girl, and I said, um, we was having a good little six-year-old conversation, and I said, are you a sinner? She wanted to dodge it, it's amazing. I love the conversation. And uh, so we talked about, do you know what sin is? Um, we talked about the consequences of sin and how sin will get you where you do not want to be. Sowing some seeds. But I'm trying to say that we are all sinners. I want to ask you that question. Are you a sinner? Well, yeah, I guess I am. You know, I, I have no problem standing before you saying, I am a sinner. You hear me say this during the invitation every Sunday. By the way, that is a gospel training. You can take what I do in the invitation and use that everywhere you go if you so wanted to, to lead somebody to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Don't check out on me in the invitation because we have, first of all, got to see ourselves because the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've all got to see ourselves as this. Can't hide it. You can try, but you can't hide the fact that you're a sinner. 
Have you declared yourself in need of Jesus? I mean, the Lord is, like, like we just got through singing and Brian pointed out, we have been, the Lord is running after you. I got to thinking about God, thank you for running after me, thank God. Man, thank you for running after me that you just didn't, first, first time I get the gospel, he don't respond, I'm done with you, next. No, he can run after me for years. Amen. And he's, some, he's running after some of you right to this very morning. So have you declared yourself in need of saving from the eternal hell fires of hell? Let me ask you this, this goes for the lost and the saved alike. Do you try to hide your sin? Do you try to flower up your sin? We can all rename our sin and make it sound good. Call it what it is. Don't dress up sin, because sin is not pretty. Sin is ugly. It is very, very ugly. The beauty of the gospel is I can go from this to this, redeemed. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. As, as I responded to the gospel story and after him chasing after me and running after me for a number of times and the, in his grace and in his mercy, he sent so many gospel messengers my way, thank God. And then when I responded to the free redemptive work of Jesus on the cross for Stephen Peoples and I surrendered myself to him and confessed myself as a sinner and he is the only one who can and will forgive me, praise his high and holy name. Thank God that I went from this to this redeemed and today if you're here today sinner you can change your placard to redeemed and you can start your story today that God wants to use to tell others how you can come how they can have the same impact in their lives as it's had in your life the power of the placard number two is the, pro the promotion of the placard the promotion now, Pilate, of all people, was not the only man who advertised the message of the cross. Hmm. Uh, there's another one who did it, uh, and all of his motives were very, very different. We know him by the apostle Paul. Paul. Just as the priests of the heathen temples placarded the images of their symbols, of their, of their little G-O-D-S's, their gods before the eyes of their devotees, you know, today, everybody has a placard for their reason. I mean, there's protesters. Oh, me. Bless the protesters. There's those that protesting the strikers on the picket line today that have their signs. There's protesters waving the signs of protest, whatever they want to protest. They're protesting their demands. Those running for office with their signs. Everybody's got a sign. Everybody's got a placard. Well, Paul paraded the cross of Jesus. But here's how he did it. Paul did it in his preaching. Indeed, advertising or portraying the cross was how he described his preaching. And he told the Corinthians, we preach Christ. But even more than that, he said, we preach Christ crucified. And when he wrote his letter to the church of Galatia, he said, oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified the word which is translated publicly portrayed is a greek word prographe which literally means placard ah, there's the word placard publicly portrayed it's a word which described the posting up of public proclamations so paul was well, he saw Christian preaching, Christian proclamation as a placarding or advertising of the cross. And that is what he did himself, and not just in Corinth or Galatia, but everywhere he went, he proclaimed the cross, he advertised the cross, he glorified the cross. Matter of fact, he said, God forbid that I should glory, he said, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. The very obvious question must be, why did he do that? Why did he concentrate on the cross? Why was this obsession with Jesus' death? I mean, why not focus on his, pre his preaching on the birth of Jesus or the life of Jesus or the ethical teaching of Jesus? Why did Paul's preaching center on the cross? The answer. The answer is that it was the cross that Paul saw the supreme action of Almighty God, the fullest expression of God's love. The fact is that the cross of Jesus does two things. One, it exposes the deadly nature of sin. 
It exposes the deadly nature of sin. When we look at the characters in the drama of the crucifixion, we see very ordinary people just like ourselves. Judas, the traitor, motivated by greed or ambition or both together. Pilate, the judge, whose sense of justice was compromised to meet public demand. Caiaphas, the high priest, who acted on what was expedient. Merchants and incense because Jesus had spoiled their takings. They were, he was messing up their game plan, selling their wares at the temple. And then there was a group of friends whose loyalty failed, his own followers. The thoroughly decent people who stayed away because they all wanted peace and uh, then there were those who allowed the mob to prevail and they joined in the crucifixion mob. It was at the cross that shows what sin of ordinary people, men and women, the sin of people, even like ourselves, can combine to accomplish. Such sinful actions can allow the noblest and the best who ever lived to be crucified. But there's another action, an even more, more positive side of the cross it exposes the deadly nature of sin, but it also reveals, this is so good, don't, don't, don't let this, it reveals the boundless love of God. When I see the cross, I see the boundless love of God. It exposes my sin, and then immediately, the boundless love of Almighty God. The cross was God's way of saying, think about this, picture the image of him on the cross. This is how much I love you in spite of what you've done, even though you have scourged me to the point of death, even though you have spit on me, even though you are crucifying me, I will go on loving you. Paul glorified in the cross because he saw it as the place where God, far from meting out to sinful man the punishment he deserved, so yearned for him to love him. Paul wanted God to love him so bad because of what he had done that he would neither cut him off nor cast him away as God's love, but instead the superb demonstration of his forgiving, reconciling love poured out on humanity the riches, the riches of his grace. Listen to this. It's been said, look, only at the cross does man see fully what separates him from God, sin. Yet here alone at the cross, he perceives that he is no longer separated from God. That is good. I come across that this week, but I had a spell when I was in my stomach. I'm like, well, I gotta read that one more time. Only at the cross does man fully see what separates him from God, my sin. But oh, also I perceive I'm no longer separated from him. It's because of his glorious love. That is why Paul consecrated on the cross. It, has been, it was because he saw that it was there. God was at work. God was in Christ. He said, reconciling, get this, folks, the world to himself. God showed, he commended his love towards us and that while we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. So for Paul, the cross was, yes, the supreme manifestation of what the matchless grace of God could do for the lost soul, of which he himself had known in such an overwhelming experience that transpired on that Damascus road that day as he was on his way to do what? Persecute believers because he was a literal dawn terrorist. That is why he gloried in the cross and paraded and placarded and advertised the cross of Christ. So let me ask you, do you, are you promoting the cross? I hope you are. The power of the cross, the dynamic of the cross, the dimension of the cross is far reaching, the working of the cross. Believer, our story should be promoting the cross. Aside from the redeeming gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, aside from the redeeming gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, Aside from surrendering your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm telling you this out of love, sin will kill you, friend. It will kill you. It will destroy you. And it can define you if you let it. Go from sinner to redeemed. At the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light, I remember this moment and the burden of the heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day but drops of grief can ne'er repay the debt of love, oh God, that I owe you. Absolutely not. Here, Lord, I give myself away. That's all that I can do. Third, the proclamation of the placard. The proclamation. It is, is, is that not in fact what Jesus commissioned us to do as we come to the table? 
I bet you've missed this. When he says in the narrative we'll read here shortly, take, eat, he said, giving to the bread. This is my body which is broken for you. This cup, this cup which is the new covenant of my blood which is shed for many. And Paul tells us, do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread, as often as you drink this cup, you, you, not church global, you individual, you do what? What does it say? You show the Lord's death till he comes. Perhaps you've never thought of the Lord's Supper as an advertisement. But that in part at least is, is what is intended to be. The words are translated, you do show the Lord's death. It's better translated, you proclaim the Lord's death or you announce the Lord's death. Uh, for the words used here is a word that is used to describe a herald and announcing an important message or a preacher proclaiming the gospel. The Lord's Supper, strictly speaking, is an act, acted sermon. It's an acted proclamation and a proclamation in which not just the preacher, but all the part of the participate join together to proclaim the Lord's death. So by our presence, we advertise our own faith. By our participation, we announce that our hope of salvation rests in the crucified, risen Lord. By our sharing in this action which we're fixing to do, we hold up in view the Redeemer's death and the fact that as the foundation of our faith and of our hope, so as we come to the table, that is the, it is the announcement, it is the advertisement that each of us make. We proclaim in these sacraments, we declare Jesus' death. He died. We proclaim as a follower of Christ because only if you are a surrendered follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, only if you've surrendered Christ as your Lord and Savior do we partake of these elements. Only do we follow the Lord's believer's baptism if we have surrendered our lives to Christ. Baptism's after salvation. Lord's Supper's after salvation. So we proclaim as a participant that we have surrendered our life to Christ. We are disciples of Christ. We are followers of Christ. We are unashamed followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that anyone here can surrender to the supreme lordship of Jesus Christ and then begin one's journey in delightful communion with him. There's a man by the name of Dr. Samuel Johnson. He wrote this quote, get this, in 1759. Long time ago. It was in an uh, article called The Idler, I-D-L-E-R. January of 1759, he wrote this. Promise. Large promise is the soul of an advertisement. Now think about that. Large promise is the soul of the advertisement. This advertisement wants me to get so high, I could care less where I'm at. That's the promise being large promise. That I got, so let, let's take that to the gospel. By sharing in the sacrament, we advertise Jesus' death until he comes. And because his death not only was a promise prophesied by all the prophets, by Jesus himself. It was a large promise, right, for ourselves and with inestimable benefits for us all. And so we will go from the table, determined in our daily living to advertise, to proclaim, to declare to the world that Jesus died. He gave himself for all mankind, the entire world rested upon his shoulders. He paid for the world's sin. No restrictions, no one being eliminated. That includes everyone in this building, everybody who's joined us live stream. And then we celebrate also as we did last Sunday and every Sunday, the resurrection of our living Lord and Savior who is coming back again. We do this until he comes again. The placard of the cross launch the initial witness that is to be being proclaimed in our daily journey until he comes. So as guilty sinners, we all wear a type of placard, right? What does yours say? If you're here without Christ, 
if you've never surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus, as of right this moment, you're hell bound. If you were to fall dead right where you're seated, you would go to hell, friend. Do you understand that? Do you understand if you know in your heart you never surrendered your life to Christ, you have no story to tell, there's no testimony that even exists, you've never been saved, you've never been redeemed, you've, you've never got here yet. Do you understand if you don't make it through today, and that may very well happen, do you understand you're, go, you're gonna go to hell? For, I, I, get last Sunday's message. Get about three quarters of the way, and then I read as, at Christmas and Easter what hell's gonna be like forever. Torment. Hell ain't no party place, friend. Don't, don't fall, that, fall for that. It's anything but a party. But if this is where you stand, you can be redeemed. I'm gonna give you that opportunity. It is a matter of you surrendering. Do you hide your sin? Do you dress it up? Christian, are you not in right standing with the Lord Jesus today? And if you were honest before your Savior, you're saved. You've got a story. You're, you're, you're solid, let's say, in your redemption. But really what you need is personal revival before you come to the Lord's table. The Lord's Supper guides that we've been given out the past week are an instrument that all of us can use and hope you have to, to cleanse ourselves from things that can be easily hidden, easily ignored, easily not dealt with. And before we come to this table, uh, 1 Corinthians tells us, let a man examine himself unless we take of the Lord's Supper unworthily. We don't wanna drag our sin to the table. We don't wanna drag our filthy selves to the Lord's table today with sin in our life and then partake of these elements as a, you know, you know Christ, but then are you kidding me? Why would we wanna come and not have it confessed? Name our sin for what it is. Do not dress it up and confess ourselves for what it is, for what it is and ask him to cleanse us and restore fellowship with him. That's the only way that you're gonna have true communion with Christ. We come to the table clean and he's the only one that can cleanse us. From sinner to redemption. And then last, I wanna ask you this question, follower of Christ. Are you promoting the placard? Are you pr promoting the cross? The glorious cross. Every day you go into a mission field in one way, shape, or form. Every one of us are missionaries. And we've got a mission field that God has placed us in. And this, that's where he wants you to be proclaiming the power of the cross, the dynamic of the cross, the dimension of the cross, the working of the cross by sharing how he has so mirac miraculously transformed you and transforming you by his shed blood on the cross. Let's promote, let's proclaim the glorious gospel. Every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're here today without Jesus, right where you are seated, friend, you can go from hell bound to heaven bound. You can change, you can alter the course through Christ from sinner to redeemed. And while I'm addressing lost friends, brothers and sisters, I want you to utilize this time of invitation to go under the microscope of the Holy Spirit and ask him to surface anything, anything that need not be there. And he will, whom the Lord loves, he chastens. So as he surfaces things in your heart, you confess it and call it what it is. Lord, I confess blank, I confess this, I can confess it. And mean confession, but don't just, you know, Careless, no, in your heart, confess it. Repent, ask God to empower you to repent from whatever it is. So you, you be doing that. Now let me address my lost friend, right where you're seated, confess yourself as a sinner. I've already addressed that, so just say, Lord, I am a sinner. I have no, no argument. I've got one plea, I'm a sinner. Now make this confession of belief. Lord, I, I believe by faith that you, Jesus, died. You died for me. You gave your body, you gave your blood for me. It was at the cross my sins were forgiven. It was at the cross you are making it possible 
for me, lost sinner, to have a relationship with you, the Savior. Now ask him, Lord, I'm asking, humbly, no pride, you come into my life and be my redeemer. Lord, I'm going from lost sinner to saved sinner, lost sinner to redeemed. Will you move in? Now pause just for a second. He, when you ask him such a thing, I promise you, he just did. The Holy Spirit of God just, just moved in your existence. You, you went from hell to heaven, eternity in hell, eternity in heaven. Thank God for the, you are born again, that's the terminology, you've been born physically, now you've been born spiritually. Now thank you for it, Lord, thank you. Oh, word not enough, but thank you God for what you just done. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for running after me. Help me to be an unashamed follower of Christ. May I advertise Jesus in my life and in my words. For I pray this now in my Savior's precious name, the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. Stand with me, please. And as you stand and ordain deacons, as the invitation is transpiring, you may make your way down front, all ordained men. You may make your way down front during the time of invitation. If you just received Christ, now's your opportunity in front of all these other believers to advertise the Lord, to proclaim the Lord Jesus that you just come to know Jesus as your Savior. Allow us to come along your side and assist you in your newfound faith. You come. May the Lord's confirm it in your heart to make this your church home, your base of ministry, your place of service. You come as God's Spirit so leads. Maybe you need to get your baptism in order. Whatever. This altar is open. You come as God's Spirit so leads. much for the moving of your precious Holy Spirit and for those that need to make decisions. And God, how I pray, Lord, that you'll just do a mighty work today in the hearts of your people. May we just see miraculous things take place. And we love you and we thank you and we praise you for it. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Can we sing that chorus again now? Jesus paid it all.
Church, you may be seated. I got you earlier. Amen. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, to God's glory uh, for the stirring of our hearts. Heather, where's Heather at? Heather Woods. Heather. Heather comes to him upside. So Heather is 10 years old, and uh, she recently received Christ uh, here and uh, at the church. And so she's making her public profession of faith in the Lord Jesus this morning, announcing that she is a follower of the Lord Jesus. If you rejoice in Heather's uh, fellowship in Jesus, let it be known by saying amen. amen. Rejoice. God bless you, sister. Amen. Thank you. Ryan Lenny comes to my side. I got to talk to Ryan before church, and uh, Ryan recently received Jesus as his Lord and his Savior, and we're going to hit him, and now I'm a Christian book, and let him start working in that, and today he's making his public profession of faith in the Lord Jesus as well, and if you rejoice in him being a dedicated, devoted, unashamed follower of the Lord Jesus, let him know and say an amen. Rejoice. Amen. Bless you, buddy. Jaden comes to my side. Um, thank you. Thank you, brother. Uh, Jaden, um, the Lord stirred her heart last Sunday. She met with uh, Garrett on Monday, is that right? And uh, prayed to receive Christ as her Lord and Savior Monday at the coffee shop. Is that what I... God meets you anywhere, I'm just telling you. And she's making her public profession of... Amen. Yes. <laughs> making her public profession of faith in the Lord this morning. If you rejoice in Jaden's decision, let him know say an amen as well. God bless you. <laughs> Brian and Leellen Woodard. Brian and Leah Edward. So these folks have been active guests with us. Um, and uh, Bryson, that's right. Bryson is 13, by the way. And uh, he knows Jesus as his Savior. He's coming today also wanting to follow the Lord and believers' baptism. And the family is desiring to unite with us um, and joining us in the army of the Lord here at Rootville Road, uh, making this their home. And so if you rejoice in all of these decisions, let me know saying amen as well. God bless you, brother. God bless you. Travis and Michelle Williams comes to my side. These folks, um, the Lord just relocated them, and uh, the Lord has allowed them to be our active guest here. She rededicated her life, you said, last Sunday, is that correct? And they both are desiring to uh, follow the Lord in membership here at, at Rootville Road, making this a place for them to call home, and uh, joining us as well, and uh, serving the Lord Jesus. And if you rejoice in the Williams' decision, let him understand amen as well. God bless you guys. I look forward to serving with you, brother. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Man, hallelujah, right? Amen, amen. Well, um, let's come to the table now. And uh, you should have your elements. If, you, if anyone, hopefully by now, if you need an element, please feel free to slip out of your seat. All of our men are here. The baskets are to my right and to my left. The Bible says that when he had given things, he break it and said, take eat, this is my body which is broken for you, and this do in remembrance of me. So we'll take the first tab and uh, obtain the wafer, and we just want to give thanks to the Lord Jesus. You know, we've been reflecting on this Easter message the past few weeks. I can't get over the brutality beyond our imagination that the Lord's body took just for me. The blood that was shed before he ever got to the cross was amazing, and how God sustained him. We praise him for his body. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving of yourself for us, oh God, for all the physical abuse, the mental abuse, the neglect, the, 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 the um, all the pain that you went, the, the, all the false mockery and the trials that you went through, Lord, the rejection that you went through, God. 
We praise you and thank you, Lord, for the supreme sacrifice, the only one that can be made for us. And we do remember it today, oh God. In your name I pray, amen. Take it. And after the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had subsayed, this cup is the New Testament, a new covenant in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, here it is, you do show the Lord's death. How, how when? Until he comes. And so the next thing that's gonna happen, folks, is his return, thank God. And so today we praise the Lord for the blood that was shed, shed on the cross. The only one that could do the remission. Without the remission, shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. All the Old Testament sacrifices pointed to the supreme sacrifice in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we'll pull the second tab and partake of the cup symbolizing the blood of the Lord Jesus. Again, we do show the Lord's death till he come. And praise the Lord for his cleansing. Thank the Lord for his forgiveness. Thank the Lord for the finished work of the cross, the empty tomb, and the fact that his Holy Spirit dwells us, empowers us. May we walk the crucified life in resurrection power, amen, until he comes again, being on mission for him. I love you, church, and the Lord. You are so precious to me and my family. I love you so much. And let's be salt, let's be light. Come back tonight, we're back in First Kings. It's gonna be a great, great message. You don't miss it, Brother Brian. Absolutely, we'll have these two quick announcements before we leave today. Number one, our Renew Ladies Conference is coming up on Saturday, the April the 20th. Many of you have not signed up yet. What a great day of enrichment and Bible study together. Not only that, we have different leaders that will be bringing different topics throughout the day as well as our guest speaker. And uh, so you want to make sure that you sign up. There's no guarantee that you'll get a T-shirt at this point. Uh, but please go ahead and register and let us know that you're coming. You can also see Miss Leanne Carter. I saw Miss Leanne a moment ago. Where are you Miss Leanne, wave right there. There's Miss Leanne. If you'd like to see her with any questions or you'd like to talk to her more about that day, please do so. Also, Brother Stephen already shared with you about next Saturday. This is our missions outreach day. We have many, many guests that have come, that have come and, and been a part of our services since last October. And not only that, just coming on Easter Sunday, not to mention the many, many, many families that we had here on campus for the egg hunt. And so we want to go and we want to go door to door to these families and we want to knock on those doors and we want to share the gospel with Jesus and uh, the gospel of Jesus with them. And so we need help. We need as many people that can come and do that. We usually have 60, 70 folks. It would be great if we had 100 people show up Saturday that's willing to come and share the gospel. We're going to meet at 9.30 in the fellowship hall, the upper area of the Christian Life Center. You come. We're going to take just a few minutes and uh, I'm going to, I can show you how to share your faith in just a few minutes. I'll do that in about a 15 or 20 minute section, I'll share with you how to do that and share your faith and go and share the gospel that day. So that's next Saturday at 930. Please come help us. Please come and be the hands and feet of Jesus and this is your opportunity to be on mission. All right. We have a lot of decisions and a lot of brand new members that are going to be down front. Uh, Mike, I'm going to ask you guys to move the table and then we're going to have all of our brand new members. If you all come line the front right here and uh, our folks would love to come and shake your hand, give you the right hand of Christian fellowship and we are so thankful for you guys and your decision. Church, if you will, come by and let them know that you love them and appreciate